Welcome to another episode of Ask the Zamboni Experts. I'm your host, Doug Peters. Along with me today from the Zamboni Company is Marty Elliott. Our guest on today's episode is Brian Zolman, owner and publisher of Let's Play Hockey, a premier hockey publication that's based out of Minnesota. Welcome, Brian. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing excellent. Thank you for joining us and our listeners today. It's a pleasure to have you. Well, thanks for having me. i uh, looking forward to it. Great. We're going to talk a little bit of hockey today. Can you tell us uh, and our listeners a bit about uh, what it was like when you were growing up in Minnesota, uh, which was a few years after I did back there, uh, and how you got into the hockey world? Well, I guess, um, you know, it, it, you feel like you were just born with skates on. Um, you know, my uncle, you know, put me on skates when I was two, three years old. And, and then, then my dad, you know, got me into organized hockey and um, but you know, it just seems like you come out of the hospital with, with a pair of breezers on, um, if you're born in Minnesota, but I remember, you know, skating that on the outdoor rinks, you know, that's my childhood memories is, is just tooling around and we would just skate for hours and hours and hours. And, you know, we'd have to get, you know, they'd have to drag us inside to, to get something to eat. Um, cause we didn't want to get off the ice, but those are probably my favorite memories is just you know, being a young kid, you know, playing with, and the fun thing about playing outdoors is you're six years old and you're playing with 10 year old, 10 year olds and 14 year olds. And, um, and then when you turn 10, you're playing against six year olds and 14 year olds. And when, when you're 14, you're playing, you know, it's just, it's just kind of a whole bunch of kids just having a blast playing, playing a game that they all love. And, uh, so those are my memories. You know, I remember coming home after, after skating and putting my toes in front of the we had a little space heater that we plugged in um, to the wall and, and boy, just trying to fight back the tears as those, as the toes unthaw and that burning sensation when they're unthawing. And you would think, you know, at that moment, you're like, well, I'm never doing this again. This is so painful. But, you know, the next day you strap them on and you head back out and, you know, same situation. You, you thaw them out and you get ready to go again. Um, and then of course got involved in association hockey. I, I played in, uh, the Tartan Association. I grew up on the east side of St. Paul, but my dad lived in Oakdale, so I, I played uh, for Tartan. Um, and, you know, I, I still talk to my teammates to this day. I mean, that was 40 years ago, and, and we're still on a text chain with each other. Um, I was just texting them earlier today. So, yeah, and that's really, in the end, what it's all about is, is the friendships you make, the memories, and and it's not so much, you know, what happens on the ice, but, you know, in the locker room and, and the silly things that you do in the car rides and the tournaments and the swimming pools and, you know, all that stuff. But uh, it's just, a, you know, it, it just becomes a, such a part of uh, a kid's life in Minnesota if they get involved in hockey. And it, it, it lasts a lifetime. It really does. Yeah, I know what that's like. I've got a good buddy of mine, uh, Mark Gillis. Shout out to him. Uh, who's one of our listeners, and it's something that uh, we're closing in on 60, and I can still remember vividly uh, him passing me the puck for my first goal playing outdoor hockey uh, at Key Wayden Park as part of MFAC. So it, it, it's a great sport. Uh, you learn a lot from it. You learn a lot from the friendships. You develop uh, friendships throughout life, and it's it's something that sticks with you. Have you ever driven a Zamboni machine, Brian? I have not. You know, it's kind of a bucket list item, but um, boy, I, get, I, I, I think I'd get kind of nervous. I don't know. I don't know how they make the turns. It looks like they're going to just go right into the, you know, hit the end board there. And for whatever reason, every time they make the turn, I don't know how they do it. Well, we, we go slow and turn to the right and NASCAR goes fast and turns to the left and maybe what we'll have to do is get you out on a machine somewhere at one of the many rinks that I'm sure that you get to visit during the year. That would be fun. That would be fun. I would, I would enjoy that. Great. You are our first major league draft pick to join us on an ask the Zamboni experts podcast. What was that experience like for you growing up? Well, um, so I was a two sport guy. Um, you know, hockey took up, you know, a good portion of my, my, uh, childhood. And, and then, you know, once the snow melted, you know, we played baseball 
but uh you know and we also played hockey and baseball we just didn't play baseball during hockey season but we, we played hockey during baseball season we played both but uh baseball was always always a, a, a love of mine um growing up as well yeah, and i can just repeat what i just said about uh hockey i can say about baseball and and just playing at the sandlot you know with my buddies and and that's what we did back then you know we didn't have these these uh crazy video games and 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 gadgets and computers and phones and all that stuff we wanted to have fun we had to go out and have fun um so every day was in the summer was a baseball game but um so yeah in high school i uh, went to hill murray and had a pretty good uh, couple years there and uh i was a i was a better baseball player than i was a hockey player um and and yeah i was i remember my dad was was getting putting pictures up for my grad party we were getting ready for my grad party so he was in the garage and and uh and my coach called me and of course it's like like nine in the morning and i'm graduated and so i was up till probably two three you know so i'm ready to sleep till noon you know as an 18 year old kid and I get this phone call at nine in the morning and it's my, my, uh, my high school coach. And, you know, and he's got this, this weird voice and he's like, he's like, Hey, Zoli, did you hear what happened? And I'm like, Oh boy, you know, hopefully nothing bad. And he's like, you know, the twins drafted you. And I mean, you talk about a, a caffeine jolt, uh, I was, you know, sprung out of bed and I was like, you know, kind of shook the cobwebs on. I was like, wait, wait, what? Um, cause it, I mean, it, nothing on my radar they they didn't you know it's just not something that i thought in a million years would happen um but apparently yeah i mean the 49th round there were 50 rounds in the draft and and uh 49th round they decided to take a 150 pound uh, left-handed hitting third baseman uh you know in the draft so uh it was cool it was it was i mean looking back it's it's you know, not much came of it, um, but it certainly, uh, I still got the letter I got from the twins here. Uh, my kids look at it and they can't hardly believe it because um, I can hardly throw a ball now. My shoulder's so bad, but, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's one of the, the feathers in my cap, so to speak, I guess, but um, it's, it's an honor. I mean, it, it was, I mean, I, I got hurt, so I never got a chance to play pro ball, but it was certainly a, uh, an honor to be drafted. That's pretty impressive. Um, it doesn't matter whether it's the first 20th, 149th, or 49th. I am uh, impressed to be able to talk to somebody who's a draft pick in Major League Baseball. Your favorite sport growing up, uh, if you had to choose between the two, would it have been baseball because you said you're better at that, or uh, was your love uh, stronger for hockey? You know, I think I think it was whatever season it was. Um, you know, in the, in the summer when it was warm out, I preferred to play baseball. Um, but I still played hockey because, you know, you had to, if you wanted to, to, you know, compete, you just, you had to play year round pretty much. Um, but then once, once hockey season started, you know, it was, it was put the glove away and let's go, let's get after it. So it depended on the season. I will say when I got to be, you know, an 18 year old, um, hockey at that point was, boy, you know, I need a break because it, it, I mean, it is so much and it's a lot of work. I mean, it's, it's fun. Um, but it, it, I mean, it can become, I mean, it becomes your life and it's, it's, it's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of, uh, take a lot of dedication, a lot of focus, a lot of time. Um, you know, looking back now, I think of all the weekends, I didn't go to our family cabin, my dad's cabin, um, because I had a game or a, a tournament or a practice or whatever. And uh, so now I'm trying to catch up on the fishing that I missed out on. But um, so I would say, you know, baseball later on, but, you know, as a 12 year old, um, whatever season it was, you know, I, it didn't matter. Well, I'm a big Herb Brooks disciple and Herb always used to say that uh, the better players were ones that did not dedicate themselves necessarily to one sport specifically that they, they had, uh, a, a balance in their sporting life. And, you know, they obviously were better at one. And I use Mike Ramsey as an example, played on the 80 Olympic team. Uh, he graduated a couple of years before I did at uh, Minneapolis Roosevelt. And mm -hmm. he played tennis and, uh, 
and hockey. And I think he had one more sport that was in there. And I, I think that it, it helps you uh, so that you develop different skill levels or skill sets um, within a sport uh, that will help you in the one that you're most passionate about. Absolutely. Okay. I think that, I think that's been proven. You know, um, I remember I coached against when I coached high school baseball, I coached against Nate Schmidt, who's uh, an all-star for the, uh, for the Golden Knights for Vegas now. And he just, where I live now, he was, he grew up 45 minutes away. So my, when I was coaching high school baseball, we played against him and I know he's a great hockey player, but Holy buckets, that kid could play ball too. Um, and, uh, so yeah, I think a lot of these guys you don't realize that they're multi-sport athletes, and you do you do pick up on you, you use different muscle groups, different hand-eye coordination. It can't hurt, you know. Well, there was that kid. Well, he's not a kid anymore, but he spent a few years in major leagues playing for the Twins as a catcher and a first baseman, Joe Maurer, and he he was reasonably good at a couple of sports. I think was he not? Yeah, yeah. I heard I know the Maurer family uh, pretty well, and um, I heard a story about Joe where uh, it was, I think he was in the minor leagues yet, but they were down at, on the beach down in Fort Myers or somewhere. And, uh, and there were some, you know, like beach football games going on. And, and this is a secondhand story. I don't even know if it's true, but, um, but anyway, uh, the, this one team was just beating everybody. And finally someone pulled Joe off the, off their, uh, off the beach towel. And they said, he just, he would just got played quarterback and just threw dot after dot after dot after dot and everyone was like who is that guy you know and I think I think he probably could have uh you know played in the NFL for for 15 years you know he might still be playing right now if he went the NFL route but yeah just a just a crazy athlete and the greatest thing about Joe is, is he's just a fantastic human being you know just a great person yeah he, uh, he, I believe, had a scholarship to Florida State that he had to pass on uh, to w when the Twins made him their uh, first draft pick. And he and his other compadre uh, of the M&M brothers or boys, uh, Justin Morneau, he's a proud Zamboni owner. Uh, he has one of our machines uh, for his ice rink that uh, he built in his backyard on his property uh, there in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And he's a former Canadian uh, who played hockey and who came uh, down to the States and became quite the ball player. So uh, I think that's examples of uh, don't, don't spread yourself uh, into one sport, uh, get out, do some other things. And uh, I think it'll help you out. C can you share with our listeners your high school career? Because in our discussions prior to the podcast, uh, you had mentioned you played at Hill Murray and you're part of a state championship team. What was that all about? And what was that like? Well, um, yeah, I, uh, I, I ventured, I defected over to Hill Murray. Um, all my, all my buddies were, were a little upset with me, but, um, my dad thought that was the best route for me. And that, actually after my freshman year, I was kind of, kind of homesick. And I said, you know, dad, I think I want to go back to my, back to the, you know, the public school. And, and, uh, he said, no, you know, stick it out. I think it's going to work out for you. And, and obviously it did, but, um, but yeah, so Hill Murray, obviously, um, they won the state tournament last year. That was their third title, uh, fourth title, sorry. Um, and I was on the 91 team, so we won the second title in, in school history. But, you know, every kid grows up um, dreaming of, of playing in the state tournament. We watch, you know, I remember in, in grade school, I don't know if they still do it now, but um, we would watch the state high school hockey tournament in school because, you know, that's just what you did in Minnesota. And, um, so, you know, to be able to play in it was obviously a dream come true. I made the team as a, as a junior. Um, now the, the year before we had just loads of talent. We had Craig Johnson who ended up playing out there in LA, uh, you know, for a long time, great player. He actually, his son just played on the, uh, USA junior team, Ryan. Um, so he was on our team the year before, uh, Tony Gruba, Sean Murray, and we had three, four, five Division One guys on the team the year before, and, and we didn't make the state tournament. Well, the next year, it was kind of like, oh, this might be a down year. We don't have that, you know, that big stud hockey player to get the puck to that, you know, and, and White Bear Lake had Brian Bonin, who went on to win the Hobie Baker Award, and um, 
you know, other teams in our, in our section were good. Uh, so we didn't really, you know, I mean, we were Hill Murray. We knew and we expected to win every game, but, but it wasn't, we weren't the favorites, you know, it wasn't a year where Hill Murray was, was sitting there at the top. And, uh, I remember in the section tournament, we were playing Forest Lake and, and Forest Lake has never beaten Hill Murray. And we got up five to one and in like a span of, of 10 minutes, it was five to five. And so we almost lost that game. And that was in the quarterfinals in the semifinals. We played Park Cottage Grove. That went into overtime and we won four to three. And then in the section finals, uh, we played at the old Met center against White Bear Lake and they got up three, nothing on us. And we scored four unanswered goals. Our fourth goal came from our third line center. I think it was his fourth goal of the year. And, uh, and next thing you know, it's like, holy buckets, you know, that, that dream I had when I was, you know, seven, eight, ten years old, you know, just like that just came true. And I mean, you talk about it, just a crazy feeling, um, just a great, great feeling. And, and the state turn was great, but I'll never forget running out on the ice in the Met Center. Um, and uh, there was 15,000 people. There was a full house. And of course, I grew up watching the North Stars play there. And I'm thinking, I can't believe I'm, you know, that the whole, you know, this place, is, it's a full stadium. I cannot believe that um, I'm playing in this game. And it was just insane. The energy in that building, uh, the electricity and, Anytime we played White Bear Lake, the rivalry just goes goes back, and um, they hated us, we hated them, and you know, it was just just a absolutely phenomenal atmosphere, and that was even more electric to me than the first state tournament game um, at the at the old Civic Center. So, uh, but yeah, we beat White Bear Lake, and um, and then next thing you know. Uh, we win three games at the state tournament and we're tossing our gloves and sticks in the air. And, and I think that that last game, you know, it was us against Duluth East. So it's the Metro private school against the small, you know, the small Northern school. So there's 18,000 people in the stands. And I think, I think 17,200 of them were rooting for Duluth East, (laughs) you know? So, um, but we pulled it out, we pulled it out and, uh, yeah, the rest is rest is history, I guess. Did you get to play at the Civic Center when they still had the clear boards, or had they made the change by then? No, nope. yep, it was still the clear board. So that tournament was the last um, one-tier tournament, so they called it the last of the great eight. The following okay. year, 1992, 90, which was my senior year, that's when they went to the two-tier. That's when they had Tier 1 and Tier 2. Now they call it Class A and Class AA. Um, at the time, a lot of people didn't like it. Uh, you know, they because it was kind of taking away that small school against the big school, you know, rivalry that people like to see at the state tournament. But at the, at, you know, now looking back, and I think people understand they made the right decision because there's so many, so many hockey teams out there, good, really good hockey teams from smaller communities that would just net, they just didn't have a chance to play in a state tournament. And the older you get, you realize that you just want, you know, opportunities for kids. So, um, they, they certainly made the right choice there, but, uh, so yeah, so that was at the old civic center and, um, and now of course it's played at the XL center. Uh, it's, I, when I lived back in Minnesota, uh, we used to be able to get a ticket, which was rather difficult back in the day because there was only one class and, uh, you almost had to have those, uh, willed to you or, there's probably a few divorce settlements that included the tickets to the state high school <laughs> hockey tournament. And we used to get them from a rink manager uh, up in Northern Minnesota and they, they were up in the upper level, but it was just great to be in there and to see the excitement and for uh, people outside the state of Minnesota uh, that might not understand uh, the, the deal to draw 18,000 uh, plus people a session uh, to the tournament was amazing. They would draw over 100,000 people to watch high school hockey. So it, it's it's truly a special experience. Even now, I haven't I haven't been back in a while, and I think I've been back since the XL. They've had it. Uh, it's still quite the experience to see. Yeah, it's did, uh, it's the best ticket in town. Did you uh, play on any national teams, either baseball or hockey, uh, during your uh, younger career? 
I didn't. I, I went down to play in a uh, a wood bat league um, down in uh, in um, Red Oak, Iowa, and one of my claims to fame there was I, I uh, shared a field with Lance Berkman, um, who ended up being a pretty good player for uh, for the Houston Astros. And I'll never forget he. I was playing at first base and and the ball came off his bat and uh, and I was yelling at my second baseman, you know, pointing up, saying ball, 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 you know, right above you. And uh, next thing I know, the ball's over the light tower. And, you know, Berkman, who looked like a 33-year-old, you know, softball beer league guy, you know, just kind of runs, you know, trots around first with a grin on his face. <laughs> um, but I don't think I've ever seen a ball hit that high and that far, you know. So, and I didn't know, I didn't know the guy from Adam at that time. But then, of course, he goes number two in the draft and, and uh, you know, has a pretty dang good career. So, um, so that's one of my claims to fame. And also, Mike Piazza, I tell my kids this, Piazza was drafted in the 62nd round. And uh, I was drafted in the 49th, and he's in the Hall of Fame. So if I would have stayed healthy, I think I would have had a shot at the Hall. <laughs> I, I think so. I think so. Now, I saw on, uh, when doing some research that you uh, were down at uh, Mankato State University before it became Minnesota State. Uh, did you play collegiately in either sport down there? I did. I played uh, played baseball down there. Um, and uh, played for Dean Boyer, who's a, a legend here in, in Minnesota. Is in as far as baseball goes and just had a blast um it's where i met my wife and and uh had a lot of fun unfortunately uh got hurt i hurt my shoulder and you know and when you're an athlete you can go from being a prospect to a suspect real fast and you know that's kind of what happened to me you know next thing you know you know, you're a 19, 20 year old uh, prospect, uh, and then hurt your shoulder, and you turn 21, and, and now you're you're too old, and you're you're banged up, and and uh, it just you know it just that opportunity just kind of passed by in the night almost it seemed like so, um, but I got no regrets. I I had fun playing college ball. I would have loved to play you know play professionally. I think I I think I would have liked to stick stick with it. You know, maybe as would have hung on as a coach or something like that. Um, I love working with, with, uh, kids, with players. Um, but, uh, you know, if, if, uh, if I, if, if I would have went and played for the twins, I would, wouldn't have met my wife. I wouldn't have my three kids that I have now. So, uh, you know, things work out, things work out for a reason and, and, uh, no regrets here. Where did your career take you after college? What did you get into as far as businesses? Well, I was a journalism major. And my first job was in Osceola, Wisconsin. And I was making, I think it was $19,000 a year. Um, me and my wife, and we, she was pregnant. So we had a little boy um, there that pretty much about 10 months after we got married. And uh, it, I just basically covered small town sports. And, uh, and then from there, we kind of got taxed out of there. You know, my wife stayed home. Uh, so we were living off 19,000 bucks, if you can believe that. And, and so we moved to Minnesota. I actually started a baseball publication called Baseball Minnesota, which was kind of let's play hockey, but baseball mode. Um, and uh, I said, well, we got to, if we're going to try to make this work, we got to get, you know, get to a central part of, of the state. So we moved to Sox Center. The baseball publication didn't, didn't work out at the time. Um, but as a as a writer, I hooked on with the local paper here, and covered covered sports. I was a sports editor for for a few years, and opportunity came to buy into the newspaper. Um, so decided to do that. Then I became uh, the editor of the newspaper and and part owner, and did that for ten years. And then Let's Play Hockey became available, and and uh, I, I pitched it to our partners, and and uh, they said no. We we got kind of got too much on our plate I don't think we know anything about hockey um so so I said well I think I'm going to go go it alone then so I sold my interest in in there in uh star publications and and bought let's play hockey and that was four years ago so we're going on year five that's impressive what were the rinks that you skated at growing up that you have a recollection of well uh polar arena was was where we practiced uh most of the time for youth uh, or played most of our games um, Westside Arena, Oscar Johnson, 
you know, any of those Ramsey County arenas, um, Phelan, um, Harding, uh, all those. Um, I remember Westside Arena was my favorite because they had the, it was, it was so cold and they had this, remember the chain link, they didn't have the plexiglass back then. They just had chain link around the boards. And, uh, but the ice was so good. It was so hard and so fast. And I wasn't a fast skater. I needed every help, all the help I could get. Um, but I used to love that ice. And I m- remember my dad hated going to that arena because he'd freeze his butt off. Um, but I loved it. So all those, all those small Ramsey County arenas, I, I didn't like the big arenas. I, I didn't like parade because the ice was so soft. Um, you know, arenas like that. Uh, so th- those Ramsey County uh, cold arenas, I thought were the best, and that's where a lot we played a lot of games growing up, and and it was fun because you know the dads are hanging on that chain link fence and they're yelling and they're screaming and and uh, it, we had a blast. Gosh, if I could go back, I would. Did your path ever take you across uh, Chris Langlet at North St. Paul at the Polar Arena or Dave Malay at uh, the West Side Rink? I would imagine, but the names do not ring a bell. Okay. Those are gentlemen that I dealt with uh, both in my time in Minnesota uh, as well as my time out here in California with the Zamboni Company. Um, okay. you, you mentioned that uh, you played a game at Met Center. Did you get to a lot of games at the Met uh, when the Stars were still there? I did. I did. I, I, uh, I grew up with my mom. My mom and dad weren't married when I was born, so I lived with my mom until I was 11. And my mom kind of had a revolving door. She had eight brothers. And so, you know, and they were all, you know, when I was, when I was six, seven years old, they were only 21, 22. Um, and we would, they would take me to North Stars games. And I remember going down the old Shepherd Road driving and uh, um, we'd do standing room only. I think you get a ticket back then for standing room only for about two bucks. And I think the beers were like probably, a dollar who knows but um but you know they'd go and drink beer and i'd just kind of sit there and, and be in awe of, of uh watching watching the north stars and i was a huge north stars fan you know i love neil broughton um cicerelli back in those days i remember willie you know my uncles loved willie pleck because you know they knew they knew he was going to fight once a game you know i mean they they wanted to see that i wanted to see broughton and cicerelli put one in the back of the net um and uh yeah, just I mean, it was it was sad when the North Stars left. It really was because there's so many fans and so many hardcore fans, and uh, and the Met Center was great. It was a great venue. It was a just a fun place to watch hockey. What was your first introduction that you recall to the publication Let's Play Hockey? Was it uh, grabbing one at one of the old uh, Ramsey County arenas, or uh, how did you run across your first copy? Well, I remember as a kid um, seeing seeing our team photo in there. Um, you know, we had – I can't remember if we'd won a tournament or finished second or third or whatever, uh, you know, and, and seeing our photo in, in the paper. And then and then we got pretty good. By the time we were peewees, you know, we got it up into the top ten of the rankings. So, you know, every week, you know, the first thing we did when we got to the arena, we checked the rankings. Um, and I think a lot of kids from, from my era, that's what they did. Now, of course, you can just – go online or go on your phone and grab them. Um, but a lot of people still look forward to grabbing that copy in the arena as well. But I was introduced to it at, at a young age and, and, uh, you know, kind of got away from it at, you know, yeah, once I, once you're, you know, 19, 20, 23 years old, you know, you don't have kids in hockey. Um, you just kind of forget about it. And then once my kid got back in hockey, you know, you grab a copy and you're just like, wow, you know, it kind of, there's the nostalgia of the publication and of the brand of let's play hockey because every kid, you know, at my age, your age, um, grew up with it. And, and that's what they did. They, you know, in the rankings, that's why there's, there's so there's, you know, they're so nostalgic that, you know, anytime a, a guy opens a paper, he, he, it brings back the memory of him playing and, and, and his peewee team being ranked third or fourth or 15th or, or whatever, you know? So, um, so yeah, it was. Uh, I was like most kids, you know, that six, seven, eight years old, probably when I grabbed my first one, and it was pretty cool to see your see your uh, hockey team in the in the newspaper. How has the public uh, publication changed over the years, and where do you see it headed into the future? Well, I think uh, 
I think the big change isn't so much in the publication. It, it's how people read their news. Um, I think a lot of, uh, obviously, younger people, um, you know, they don't, they aren't running to the newsstands to grab a newspaper. They got their phones, they got their iPads, they got their laptops. Uh, you know, social media, I think, has, has kind of been, it, it's, it's made it more difficult. Um, you know, people just don't seem to want to dive into a 500 word or a thousand word story on, on, on a kid, you know, on a, on a, a prospect or a player or whatever they want everything in 140 characters, right. You know, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, they want it now. They want it fast. Give me more, more, more. Um, so it, it's really hard to captivate those young, the younger audience from a print standpoint, we can still do it digitally. Um, but we still have plenty of people who, who love the love the physical paper and they love to grab it. It's always there. So you, they bring it home. It's on the counter. They might read one story, uh, you know, tonight and, and pick it up and grab them and read another story and flip through it, you know, while having coffee the next morning. So um, the biggest thing I, I see it as is, is content. We provide content. And if that content is good, um, people are going to read it and the way they read it doesn't really matter, you know, whether it's print, whether it's digitally, um, social media, whatever. Um, but that's how let's play hockey stays relevant. It's just by providing good content. Will we be printing a newspaper in 10 years and five years? Will we'll be all digital. Um, you know, that, I don't know that, you know, the business kind of model kind of, um, it shapes itself, you know, the, the advertisers will dictate you know how that works um you know if we do continue print you know we obviously need the horses on board to, to help pay for that uh, at the end of the day um it is a business and and we got to make a buck so um but it's it's going good this year's been tough with covid uh we've been shut down a couple times now um our distribution is the arenas so we can't if the arenas are closed we got no way of getting our papers out into the hands of of uh, hockey fans and you know, in addition to that, advertisers aren't going to pay, uh, you know, pay high rates to, for a, a publication that people aren't reading because they can't, they can't get to it. So, um, so that's been a challenge uh, this year. Uh, we're hoping that we'll kind of go by the wayside um, sooner than later. But you just, if we learned anything in the last nine months, it's that you, you just don't know what's going to happen, to, you know, seven to 14 to 21 days from now. Yeah, it's been challenging. There's a lot of people that I know um, based on our industry. I was on a Zoom call with the Minnesota Arena Managers Association, and it's uh, a lot of people chomping at the bit to try to get things going. State of hockey. I like to say that California is the new state of hockey and that Minnesota is the old state of hockey. Uh, and I say this because we have three NHL teams. We have five AHL teams with the sixth one uh, being – plan for in Palm Springs that will be the um, minor league team for the Kraken. What say you about Minnesota being still the state of hockey? Well, I tell you what, you take your, uh, you take your 20 best 18 year olds. We'll take our 20 best 18 year olds and, and we'll just uh, do a, a seven game series. And we'll, we'll let that decide it. How about that? Well, you'd be careful now. There's a lot of good <laughs> hockey players that are coming out of California, including some first round draft picks. So I think that California by sheer numbers, and this is tongue in cheek for all you Minnesotans out there. Um, it really is something that uh, California's got an advantage because of the sheer numbers. We certainly don't have the number of ice rinks that they have in Minnesota, and it's certainly not the fabric of the community uh, like it is back in Minnesota. But I like to think that uh, we've got some pretty talented hockey players coming out of out of California here. No, oh, I agree. I agree, and it's actually it's great to see um, the game grow um, out west and down south, and you know it's getting bigger. And and I know you know it, it's fun to see Nashville uh, go as far as they did a couple of years ago. So I think that really uh, really kind of blew up that market. Um, I think Seattle now having an NHL franchise, that market is gonna gonna explode. Um, California having the NHL in California. I mean, there's a reason they sent Gretzky out there. They wanted to grow the game, and uh, and and it's happened. And you're right. I mean, there's been a, a lot of uh, guys in the NHL right now uh, who are from California. So um, I think Minnesota will always be the state of hockey. No offense, no offense. But 
Um, none, none taken. Just put that word in front of there. I think is it an adjective old uh, in front of that, and we'll claim new, and uh, we'll we'll just call it a draw. There you go. There you go. Um, but no, you're right. And I think, uh, gosh, who's the guy who went this year in the um, first round? That was uh, maybe it wasn't this year. Maybe it was last year. But um, no, well, Austin, every, Ma- Austin Matthews was just a couple of years ago, and he was a kid out of Arizona, I think, and may may have been born in California. I'm not quite sure. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a great publication like Let's Play Hockey out here in California to keep everybody well, apprised of what's going on. We're always looking to expand in, into hot markets, so um, maybe we'll have to send send some out. You know, actually, we thought about that. You know, it being such a valuable resource for for uh, for coaches and for parents. Um, you know, to kind of hit some of these new markets where, uh, you know, it might help, you know, get, that's the good thing about our publication is it is a resource. We have tips on, on, uh, you know, skating and shooting and, and, you know, um, you know, for coaches on, on how to control locker rooms and, and, you know, we have rules and all this stuff. So I, I can imagine, you know, someone my age who grew up in California, obviously probably didn't play, but, uh, my kid might be crazy about it and I don't know the first thing about it. So, um, so yeah, uh, that's that's one of the good things about let's play hockey is it's a valuable resource for people that maybe aren't didn't play the game or or uh, don't know the game as well as 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 some others. Well, let me know if you need a writer if you expand out here with a really good editor that could make me sound smart. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Brian, do you have uh, let's play hockey? Uh, is it in the Canadian marketplace anymore? Uh, no, so we we're basically in um, seven states. So we're Minnesota, uh, North Dakota, South Dakota, Iowa, Wisconsin, uh, Illinois, and then we do send some out to Vegas and some to Indiana, and we're in an arena in Nashville. Um, I know you guys got Cal- what is it called, California Rubber out there. There's a publication that I've seen. I don't get into too many rinks in California. Um, I will make it a point to look the next time I visit a California rink to see what they're um, pushing. Yeah, they might just be digital too, but I, I know I've, I've read it before, and I, I think they started as a roller hockey magazine, but now that now that it's gotten uh, the ice skating part of it has gotten bigger, I think they cover cover some of that too. So One of the things I like to talk about is food. And I'm wondering if you can share with us and our listeners, where is your favorite place to dine and what is your favorite style of food, whether it be Italian, Mexican, uh, Ludafisk, maybe being in Minnesota there? Well, boy, I hope I don't disappoint here. Um, I can't seem to drive by an Arby's without stopping. There you so go. That, that, that's my go-to. Um, but as far as, uh, as, far as a restaurant, uh, like a sit-down restaurant goes, um, I'm all for a good steak. So Mancini's downtown, uh, St. Paul, right by the XL yep. Energy Center there. Um, they got the best steak in town. So anytime I'm downtown uh, at the state tournament or the expo, I make make sure I get there and, and uh, have a couple beers and, and, a, and a steak. And, and uh, just the atmosphere there, too, kind of harkens back to the 1960s, 70s. And, and uh, I don't know if you've been there, but if anyone comes to St. Paul, make, make, make sure they get down to Mancini's. It's great. Well, I, I know that the coldest beers in all of St. Paul are at Tom Reed's Hockey City Pub. And he, he's been kind enough to join us for an Ask the Zamboni Experts podcast. And I'm going to throw it out there for him. Uh, a little bit of uh, promo for you, Tommy. Uh, and a great family friend that uh, goes back to the days when I was a kid. My dad was working at the Met Center. Uh, last three well, questions. Go, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I will. I will add, I've been to Tom Reed's many times. Their food is always fantastic. Um, and you talk about a fun hockey atmosphere. Uh, it's just great. It's great to hang out there, to watch a game, to hang out before a game, after a game. Um, I mean, it, it's kind of a land, it's become a landmark in, in downtown St. Paul. White Castle, yay or nay in your books? Yay. There Big you yay. go. <laughs> <laughs> There's some people who don't understand it, but you really have to go inside. And I used to go to one on Lake Street uh, back in the day when I was a younger lad living in Minnesota. And uh, you get the experience of seeing the clientele at about 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning. And you get the smell of those cooking onions on top of the um, whatever meat that that is that they cook. 
Oh, I tell you, my my wife loves it when I get them. And I I'll get them in the car, and she'll be like, and I'll get extra so I can eat heat heat more up when I get home. And uh, she makes me put them in the way back, like under <laughs> under stuff. She, you know, it could be twenty degrees out, and she's got the windows rolled down. Um, it's got to smell better than it. hockey equipment, doesn't it? It does. I think it might be close, but. <laughs> Who's your favorite pizza guy? Well, I'd say it's got to be Carboni's. Um, they got the best pizza and pasta. If you, I mean, if you like Italian food, if you like pizza and, and uh, pasta, that's the place to go. Uh, and the good thing about Carboni's is they got 36 locations around the metro, around the Twin Cities area here. So um, you can't walk too far without running into one. Um, but if you are a pizza guy, um, if you haven't had Carboni's, you got to have it. It's so good so good that's one of the places that uh, i go to i'm glad to hear that uh they're high on your list as well they're part of a program called you promise which is a savings program or loyalty program that uh, gives money back that you can use for college educations and i uh, i can tell you that when i've stayed out in bloomington by the mall of america there's one over in bloomington not too far away that uh, is on my uh, list of places to go as well as some in Egan and Burnsville. So very good choice with Carboni's. And again, a former Minnesota, now California will highly recommend that product. Well, the, the last thing I want to ask you is does let's play hockey have any projects or programs that you'd like to discuss or promote through this podcast? Uh, please share with us and our listeners. Well, um, you know, we're, like I said, with the expo, um, for those who haven't been there, uh, it, it, it's a bucket list item for anyone that loves hockey and uh we're hoping to have it this year and uh and check us out online uh www.stateofhockey.com we partner with uh with the minnesota wild for our, our website and obviously you can pick up our our publication at any arena in those seven states i i talk to and if not if you can't find one uh give me a call or shoot me an email brian with a y at letsplayhockey.com and and we'll get you a copy our subscription rates are low. We'll send it anywhere in the United States or Canada. Um, so if you want uh, some good hockey content, uh, hit us up and, and, and we'll get it in your fingertips. I, I can vouch for that. As a former Minnesotan and a kid who grew up uh, reading the publication, it's great that uh, you've taken it uh, from Bob Utech to a former Teddy Doug uh, Johnson to now you carrying the torch uh, for hockey publication in Minnesota. It's the uh, premier publication. And we've been lucky enough to have Grammar Stan of uh, the Hockey News uh, join us. And now, uh, Brian, you've joined us uh, on one of our podcasts, and we thank you for that. We want to thank everyone for listening in to another episode of Ask the Zamboni Experts podcast. Have a question for one of our experts or an idea for a future episode, please email your questions or requests to info at Zamboni.com. For more information and additional podcast episodes, please visit Zamboni.com forward slash podcast or search Ask the Zamboni Experts on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. This is Doug Peters along with Marty Elliott wishing you an ice day.